Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodian saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you're not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. And at that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but to God what belongs to God. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay, and welcome to Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and you teach the ways of God with the truth. And you're not concerned about anyone's opinion. No wonder they killed him. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine someone today going out and saying, you know what? This is what God asks of us. This is how God sees that. This is what God's law calls us to. Nowadays, those people are called anti. They're called uh, right-wing nuts. They're called intolerant. They're called hate groups. They're called phobic. Because we teach the truth of God and are not worried about other people's opinions. That challenge in all of our lives to remain faithful to the law of God. And what happens, and it happens often, you have some really, really wonderful people, faith-filled, they love their children, they've done whatever they can for their children, their children have made choices in life, and now the parents don't know how to love them. And somehow we have come to that point that if we don't support them in everything we do, we're, in everything they do, we're alienating them. I talked about this a few weeks ago in Mass. And there's a commercial out there. And I don't know what the commercial, it, it, it's a pizza commercial, okay? I, I don't know what brand it is, I don't care. But it's a little boy sitting in an easy chair and his dad comes in, here's your pizza, you know, my loving son. You know, like the adoration of the Magi, he's bringing him a stupid pizza, all right? And when he puts the pizza there, the little boy says, you know, is it the one with the extra cheese and the cheesy crusts and pepper, whatever it is? No. And, and the little boy, the dad's got on a hat that says, number one, dad. And the little boy rips off the number one, throws it away, and turns away from his father. My dad did that all the time when I was growing up, you hear? I still wouldn't be able to sit down 65 years later if I'd have done that to my dad. But you know, there's something wrong with that mentality. There's something radically wrong with the mentality that children come to believe that our sole purpose in life is to cater to them, to protect them, to find safe spaces for them and make sure they have everything they want. Really? Obviously. Anyone who's got any sense 
you love your child, you want to make sure that you prevent them from doing stupid things that kids do. But having a safe space, I don't want to send them to this school because someone may make fun because they're fat, they're short, they got pimples, they got red hair, whatever, and I'm going to try and protect my, my kids and think that I can find a safe space. I'd love for there to be no bullying. I'd love for children to look at each other as equals and have great mercy and great compassion. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Kids are kids, and they can be cruel. And you know, learning how to deal with the fact that you don't always get what you want, some people like you, some people don't like you, it's life. It's life. Do you really think you're going to get a job where you're sitting at your little cubicle and your boss is going to come in with the adoration of the Magi pizza and give you a pizza and be, not be the number one boss? Where do these people live? Where do they work? Are we going to go through life with Play-Doh and therapy dogs keeping the next generation safe, saying no one's going to ever disagree with them? or do something you don't like. It's not reality. And I'm sure there are people right now saying, you yeah, know, listen at him. He's preaching all that. That's what I just said. Our Lord didn't worry about opinions. He tried to remain faithful to the truth. And one of the great truths of the gospel is the crucifixion. One of the great truths of the gospel, and we get it in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, unless you take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. And Luke says, unless you take your cross daily and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Our Lord never said, come follow me, it's a yellow brick road, okay? He never said that. And that's not going to happen in the course of our lifetime. And discipleship involves sacrifice. What done? Marriage. It involves sacrifice. You know, I have these young couples come in my office. They want to get married. They're in love. And they, they, they can't ever not be leaning on each other or touching each other while they're in my office, okay? You know. They got to show how much they love each other and they're pawing each other. Well, great. If you think the next 50 years is going to be one big honeymoon and it's hoochie-coochie and kissy face every time we get, somebody better medicate you real good, you hear? You're not going to stay married. There can be times it's a good thing you love them because there are days where you really don't like them. You don't like the way they act. You don't like the things that they say. You don't like their, their mood or their whatever it is. It's called life. You know, if, if you're going to be married, you got to sacrifice. There are a lot of things you got to do without. If you're going to have kids, you got to make huge sacrifices. Do you realize how much money you would all have if you never had children? Huge sacrifices. Oh, yeah, this is what I want to do. I've just worked a 40-hour week. I'm in traffic one hour to work, one hour back from work, and I spent the whole weekend sitting in a hot ballpark on wooden bleachers watching my little boy strike out at T-balls and go, Yay! It's sacrifice. It's sacrifice. And if you love your children... Teach them the truth. No, it wasn't good. Everything's not wonderful. Everybody's not going to go through life with the next generation, everything you do, and go, yay! You came back from the bathroom one time. Let's give you a gold star. Yay! You know? Uh, The idea of people proclaiming the truth with great charity and great clarity. 
I'm not talking about the dry drunks. I'm not talking about the people who just blurt it out and they offend whatever and they heck with you. I don't care what you, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about loving someone enough to tell them the truth, to tell them the truth and to help them realize we don't live in a perfect world. Help them realize we're all born with the stain of original sin and we're living among people who have the stain of original sin and there are going to be some wonderful things in this world and there are going to be some awful things in this world. And there can be some people who love you and there can be some people who just want to have nothing to do with you. That's life. And there are times where you're going to have to suffer for your beliefs. That's anyone who wishes to be my disciple must take up his cross and follow me. The problem is, is a lot of people have come to believe that if my core beliefs don't make people that I love happy. It's not that they have to change. They think we have to change our beliefs. Good friend of mine. I married all of her children. And, you know, at some point, one of the couples decided that the, the, the Catholic Church really wasn't where they belonged. More their friends and their social status went to the Episcopalian Church, and they felt more comfortable among the Episcopalians because they had more friends in the Episcopalian Church. And they left the Catholic Church and joined the Episcopalian Church. And when they, they did, I baptized the first child. They wanted the second child baptized Episcopalian. And the mom said, well, fine but I'm not coming to the baptism. Well, they were horrified, horrified. How can you not come to your own grandchild's baptism? You know what, Dolan? You make your decisions and you live with them. Why can't I make my decisions and live with them? You make your decisions based on where you're more socially accepted. I make my decisions based on my core beliefs about God and who I believe He is and what He asks of me. And the fact that I have not participated in this child's baptism doesn't mean I won't love them, but my Catholic faith is very important to me and passing it on to my children is very important to me. And had you told me you had theological differences with the church, I may have understood it. But the fact that you're socially more inclined among this group doesn't wash. And I'm not going to participate. It's amazing how we think the next generation can make any decision they want, and we have to accept it because we love them. But they can go completely contrary to our core beliefs and not think they're not and not think we ought to have a right to stick to our core beliefs. When our Lord says, you know, and they say to him, We know you preach the truth of God. You're not worried about opinions. First of all, I wish we had more people who knew the truth of God, and secondly, had the courage of their convictions. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Close to Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey is over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support, enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you.
He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar. To that he said, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. Hello and welcome back to Closer Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Byer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. You know what? There was a time in my 64 years when faithful Christianity and faithful citizenship were pretty much the same thing. If you were a good practicing Catholic and or Christian and lived your Catholic Christian principles as a matter of your everyday life, you would not have been at odds with any of the things that were required as a good American citizen. Because there was a time where one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, really meant something. Now, you know, let's not go there when we say, with liberty and justice for all. There's always been abuses of that. There always has been, there always will be. It's called human nature. But institutionally, is, you know, is every person afforded the same rights? That's been part of my life. But now, being a faithful citizen and upholding and promoting the laws of this country and successfully practicing your Catholic Christian faith, got some real challenges there. You got some real challenges. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Okay, all women, men, all right. That all men are created equal. You notice they didn't say are born equal. They say created equal. And when we talk about creation, that occurs. Oftentimes, four to six weeks before the person carrying the child is even aware that they have created human life. We have allowed those people who want to destroy human life to say it's a fetal blob. It's a fetal blob. Good. Leave that fetal blob alone and see if it comes up animal, mineral, vegetable, or a beautiful little human life. You can't deny that what is created to be is a human being, not a turnip. It's created that way. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created. They're, that, they're endowed by that creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. From the moment they're created, they're endowed by God with certain inalienable rights, the first of which is life. Explain me, Lucy. I don't get it. I don't get how we can say that what's been created 
is not guaranteed the rights that are, are contained in the preamble. It's human life. It's not going to come out anything but a human life if you don't destroy it first. If we are made by God an image and in the image and likeness of God, then God is the one who gives life and God is the one who determines when we die. And so a committee, which is now being discussed in our nation's capital, a committee that wants to decide, they can determine. They can determine when the, quote, quality of life is no longer viable or acceptable. We choose that now the time has come. The lack of quality of life the expense at sustaining life a human being chooses when that life is to end. Now please be very, very aware of Catholic teaching. We do not have to sustain human life. When someone is sick, the two things we cannot do is prevent a person from having food and hydration. We can't deprive them of that. We don't have to put them on respirators that artificially keep them alive. We don't have to hook them up to all sorts of tubes. But we have to make sure that we make available food and hydration. The other things are not necessary. And I'll tell you right now, if I get to that point, you know, let me go. Let me go. Don't kill me. Let me and God work out the details. Don't kill me. I don't want to be left alive on some machine. I don't want to do that. Understand that. But it's God's decision and not our own. And so this faithful citizenship is now being challenged. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the two shall become one. What God has joined together, we must never divide. The definition of marriage is set by the sacred scriptures. I understand that they're same-sex attraction. That's nothing new under the world, okay? You know, same-sex sexual activity goes on from biblical days. This is not something we've created for the 21st century. That's always been around. And the fact that two people want to get married defies the definition of marriage as set forth in the scriptures and also denies one of the basic principles of marriage as set forth by the church. The, we asked a couple, three questions. Have you come here freely without reservation to give yourselves to each other in sacramental marriage? We have. All right? That's permanence. Will you, will you uh, accept children lovingly from God and raising according to the law in his church? We will. Not possible. Not possible. Permanence, fidelity, and children are the three conditions set forth in the scriptures for marriage. And children is not a possibility. You know, they're saying now that they're going to be able to do whatever. I don't know. You know, I think when you get to that point, I think we've gone well past it. And so all these issues raise the question, Give to God what is God's, but give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Well, 
What if God and Caesar are at odds? Who are you going to choose? Are you going to choose God? Or are you going to choose Caesar? When it's all said and done, and we obviously know we have no idea when that day comes for any of us, when it's all said and done, do you really believe we're going to stand before the Supreme Court of the United States and they're going to decide our salvation? Really. And so many good people are so conflicted because they love their children. And their children have now become part of uh, a generation that has rejected a lot of things. And they want to show that they love them. And, but they don't want to turn away from God. And I've used this example many times. If I were a parent and I knew my child was using crystal meth or doing whatever drugs, he's living in my house, he's stealing, he's doing crystal meth, but it makes him happy. He loves, he's not very productive, but he loves, you know, living lit up, okay? Just great for him. If I love my child, am I going to make sure he has enough crystal meth? Because it's what he wants. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm scared it might kill him. Well, because it's what my child wants, am I going to support something that may endanger their salvation? just so that my child can know that I love them and I support them and I'm with them. See, give to God what is God and give to Caesar what is Caesar's has brought about a lot of challenges in this current day and age that weren't there when I was born. And I don't think they're going to get any less. I think they're going to get greater. The challenge between God and Caesar has been since from the time of Christ. And the choice, whether or not I remain faithful to God or follow the crowd has been there since the time of Christ. I hope you make the right decision because you know what it is. Thanks for being with us. May each day bring you closer to your walk with the Lord. God bless you.